In this paper, we propose a novel framework for automatically finding and extracting single period representations from periodic motion. Periodic motion can be found in many different places. Combined with state machines and motion graphs, single period representations already find active use in game animations. The state of the art, as found implemented in Unity 4, requires the animator to pick out appropriate start and end frames and smooths the transitions between them. Using recent advances in applied algebraic topology, we produce a pipeline that captures representative periodic motion from nearly periodic data. Our pipeline keeps human interaction low, is computationally efficient, builds on a rigorous mathematical foundation, and allows for automatically aligned blending of motions. To the left, we see an example input with two-dimensional PCA projection for visualization. To the right, the resulting output from our pipeline, visualized and animated. So, how do we accomplish this? Our method is based on point cloud topology and circle-valued coordinate functions. We take motion capture data, represented in 62 dimensions, seen here, again, projected down to two dimensions. Here, the curves are seen overlapping, but in its original high-dimensional representation, these are disjoint curves. We must first construct an approximation of the space of all the periods. This is where we use persistent cohomology. We connect points together that are at most epsilon distant in this high dimensional space. We sweep epsilon from zero to successively higher values. This gives us a sequence of spaces called a filtration, from which we can track and extract topological features over different values of epsilon. For example, components and potentially useful circle valued functions. This is shown as a barcode where long bars correspond to persistent features. We can turn these features into coordinate functions. The details are given in the paper. In good cases, the resulting coordinate function assigns like values to similar poses. We can detect these good cases and then track periods and phases intrinsically. We show the resulting coordinate function here with colors representing the coordinate values on the circle. Now that we have a good coordinate representing a parameterization of the periodic motion, how can we use it? We can average several cycles of a recorded walk to generate a typical walk cycle. The black highlighted points are the immediate neighbors on the circle, and we use a simple centroid calculation to construct the representative path in red. But other averaging schemes can be used as well, Gaussian weighting for instance. Each iteration in the motion sample used should be similar, but does not have to be a perfect copy of the others. The weird motion at the bottom here comes from the averaging of two different punches, one jab and one uppercut, into a single motion. Recall that the plots to the right are two-dimensional projections of the 62-dimensional joint space curve, colored by coordinate value. Almost the entire original punching motion has been assigned just one coordinate. The boxer is an example of input which carries several different motions, and so a single motion cycle is not present. Instead, we get several different coordinates which detect different portions of the input, the different punches. In this second example, we can see there can be scale dependencies in these coordinates. The walk and the run are detected at smaller scales than the jumping motion. Already useful as walk cycles for animation, these coordinates in average close curves have other applications. We show here how to do automatically aligned motion interpolation. We start out with a walk cycle, shown here together with the coordinate function and the original data in 2D projection. First, we represent both walk cycles with equally many densely sampled frames. With the parameterization, it is a simple one-dimensional optimization problem to find a shortest fade over path, representing the smoothest alignment for the interpolation, with the least phase shift necessary. We draw a straight line between each pair of frames in the two walk cycles and minimize the sum of all the lengths of these thin blue lines. Once aligned, we can transition between the motions easily by linearly interpolating between the two representative motions. The way to visualize this is as a cylinder connecting the two circles representing the motions. The transition is then a helix on this cylinder. Once generated, downsampling gives the output motion ready for use. On a final note, our examples have been mostly for walking motions and walk cycles, but the pipeline only assumes periodicity. Many different motions can be used.